This is a Steinhaus Longimeter. It was invented in the 1930s, but I made this one myself. It's a device for measuring the length of a curved line. It's a transparent overlay made up of three square grids. You can click a link down there and get a PDF and print out your own. You lay it over some curve and you count how many times the curve crosses the line. And that number of crossing tells you the length of the curve in millimeters. This thing was invented by Hugo Steinhaus. He was a Polish mathematician who did lots of great work starting at the time between the two world wars. He was a professor and also part of a group of mathematicians who used to meet at a bar and pose really hard problems to one another. They wrote these problems in a notebook they called the Scottish Book. It was named after the bar they hung out in. And the really hard problems, they had prizes attached to them like a bottle of brandy or in one case, a live goose. Anyway, Steinhaus was interested in all kinds of geometrical stuff, including measuring lengths of curved things. The basic idea of using a grid and counting the boxes is a pretty simple one in my opinion. If you want to know how long the curve is, you just see how many of the boxes it goes through. Really, that's the same as counting how many times it hits one of the grid lines. It seems like a decent idea, but with a plain square grid, it actually doesn't work very well. Check it out, I'll draw a six inch line and I'll try to measure it with this half inch grid. Now if the grid is angled parallel with the line, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, I count 12 10, intersections 10, 12. and since they're half inch boxes, I'll multiply by a half and I get 12 times a half is six inches, which is how long the line is. But now what if I turn the grid like this and count? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. I get 17 crossings, which when I multiply by half is 8 and a half inches, which is too much. See, what happened is when I'm counting the grid intersections, it's like I'm counting once for each time it moves over horizontally in the grid, and once for each time it moves over vertically. Really what I counted is like this much plus this much. So if you use the grid like this, you're counting distances along the grid instead of this straight diagonal, which is much shorter. So a simple grid isn't really that great, and it's the angles that mess it up. You want to somehow be able to compensate for the error introduced by the angles, but you don't know how the angle is going to change as you move across your curved line. So here was Hugo's big idea. I measure the thing with a simple grid, and then I move the grid by 30 degrees and do it again. And then move the grid again by 30 degrees and do it again. This gives me three different measurements using different angles. Now all three are probably going to be One, overestimates, two, three, but the four, errors should five, hopefully five, average five, out eight, since I did it three nine, different nine, times. 11, Steinhaus did some probability and he computed what the expectation of the overestimation would be. This involves some weird trigonometry, but he came up with this magic number, 3.82. Actually, when you work it out, that 3.82 comes from taking the average of these two weird numbers. All those root 3s and root 2s come from trigonometry. Anyway, the fact is, if you measure along the three angled grids, and then you divide everything by 3.82, you get something pretty close to the length of the curve. Then Hugo realized that measuring three times along angled grids is the same as measuring just once on a triple grid. See, this thing is just three grids superimposed on each other at 30 degree angles. So you just count intersections with the triple grid, and then you divide by 3.82. But actually, Hugo thought of that too. Instead of making you divide by 3.82, he just multiplied the grid scale by 3.82. See, these little squares in this grid are all exactly 3.82 millimeters on each side. So you don't have to divide by that number at the end. You just count the number of crossings, and that's the length of the curve in millimeters. It's pretty great. Now when you try it out, one thing you'll realize real quick. Steinhaus's millimeter scale longimeter is really small. The small grids will give you more accuracy, but it'll take you a while to count up the crossings if you've got a decent sized curve. You'll also run into some multiple crossings. Like if the curve goes right through a point which is an intersection of two of the grid lines like this, 
you've got to count that twice. Remember, we're keeping track of how many lines are being crossed. And this here is crossing two lines, the horizontal one and the vertical one. On the actual longimeter, this can get a little nasty. Like right here is a quadruple point. That's pretty rare, though. I did another video with a length measuring device called a map measure. Let's compare these two and see if they agree. The map measure, I get 34.5 centimeters. Because the millimeter scale is so small, I made up a tenth inch scale longimeter that's a little easier to use. And with the tenth inch longimeter, I count 114 crossings, which would be 11.4 inches. And in centimeters, that's 28.9. Hmm. I kind of like this longimeter. Looks like a jumble of random lines, but actually the angles and the spacing of these lines is precisely calibrated to make it useful. It's a great example of a design that doesn't look like anything really, but is actually super fine-tuned for a specific purpose. Steinhaus actually patented this thing. I guess he intended to produce and market it commercially. I bet you could make these a lot cheaper than a map measure, which is a pretty complex precision instrument. But I've never actually seen a commercial product based on the longimeter idea. I guess it never caught on. And I guess World War II pretty well killed any plans Steinhaus himself had for making these things. Steinhaus was in hiding for the whole war. Remember that Scottish book, that notebook of problems that they wrote in the bar? Steinhaus had the only copy, and he kept it with him during the whole war. He saved that thing, and uh, afterwards, people were still working on those problems for decades. One of them was solved in 1972 by a young mathematician. I'm not making this up. They gave that guy the goose.